Ah, yeah, you can go ahead and time, perfect. Oh, it's so busy. Seems a lot has been happening. Nivellette! Hello. You've come at the right time, but you'll have to wait for just a moment, as there are some urgent matters I must tend to first. In the meantime, please, have a seat. If you'd like to have something to drink, let the melusine outside know. That's all right. We just ate. Very well, then. Let's take a break over there while we wait for him to finish his work. Oh, my God! What the heck? Mm -hmm. I love How music here. So many frogs. Get in there. there all right. I should wrap things up for now. So, what is going on? Yes, sorry to keep you waiting. Australia! Today should be the day you were released from the fortress of Meripede. And it appears that you've managed to complete all the release paperwork. That's right, and we came here to see you right away! Hmm, a massive whale. Do you have any idea what that might be? Judging from your description, that cannot have occurred in any ordinary waters, but rather something like the primordial sea. A whale of that size and shape cannot usually be found in the waters of Tevat. Therefore, we can only assume that child is presently immersed in primordial seawater. Immersed in primordial seawater? What the hell? Is he okay? Well, yeah, being non Fontanian being in as nine, he shouldn't dissolve most people wouldn't be capable of entering in the first place that's not completely sure how he could have it has to be there a... yes what is it what was that term we felt earlier oh right Pino felt it too oh we right that It turns out that I have just received a report about this particular matter. In fact, that's exactly what I was busy with a moment ago. The source of the tremor was here on the surface near Poisson. After the shaking stopped, the water levels in the Poisson area rose at an alarming rate. The water levels rose? Oh no! What about all the people there? Fortunately, the water levels only rose for a short period of time and have already returned to normal now. However, I still but, uh, have a bad feeling about the whole phenomenon. If the change in water levels is connected with the leaking primordial seawater, then the situation in Poisson may be much worse than it appears. We gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. should be in Poisson, right? We need to go check on her! I would also like to go there as soon as possible, but I'm afraid I can't leave just yet. We must immediately formulate disaster prevention plans for the surrounding coastal areas to avoid potential catastrophes. I'll have to ask you two to go to Poisson first. I'll meet you there to check on the situation once I finish things here. Yep, no, that's cool. There's no time to lose. Let's get going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Teleport. Please be careful. I was going to try not to teleport. No, we are teleporting. There it is. There it is. Into the taxi. No, dang, I mean... Oh no! What happened here? <laughs> oh yeah, no, it is rough. It's not your own. Yep. Oh no! No, 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 no. Just 
forgot. I need my pink pink. Oh dang, the fish is turned over. This is really bad. Somebody's alive. Just stay Dude. Put. We're coming up. Watch your balance. <laughs> All right. Just hurry. <sighs> I'm not young anymore. How will I survive on my own? <laughs> Desiree. Oh, that's a, he looks pretty That's sad. a different way to spell Desiree. <laughs> my leg. My leg. How could this have happened? Oh my God. <laughs> it hurts. Did her leg Just break? Hang in there. Help is on the way. You can hold my hand if it makes you feel better. I think she hurt. Maybe she did. You're here. We heard there was a situation <coughs> in Poisson, so we came as quickly as we could. Yes. As you can see, the water level suddenly rose. It caused quite the disturbance, in fact. next to a building southeast of here. We've already transported him to safety, but we've run out of medical supplies. Uh, he's wounded? How badly? He fell, so it's probably a broken leg. He's pretty shaken up. When the water level rose, he desperately climbed up to the roof. Once the water receded and he saw the ground, he became terrified and eventually... Oh. He jumped down then. Find the leader of Squad One and tell him to take the wounded resident to see a doctor. He should know where to go. No, no, who's the character this guy is cosplaying? Understood. Really I'll take over his search and rescue mission in the meantime. All right, you'll be in charge. I'm sorry. Where were we? Uh, this situation in Poisson? Ah. Uh. Right. Allow me to explain. Yeah. Yeah, no. A little earlier, we suddenly heard a loud noise. Oh, so what At first, that? everyone thought that something might have exploded in the waterways. But before we knew it, water started pouring out from everywhere. The rushing water seemed a little odd, almost like the unique color of primordial seawater. Some people didn't realize the danger and thought it was just ordinary water leaking from somewhere. Everyone on the street who happened to be close to the water didn't have a chance to escape. As the water levels rose, they suddenly disappeared. They were all dissolved. Those who realized what was happening started to flee in a panic, desperately trying to get to higher ground. Many were injured in the stampede, and some... some people fell from significant heights. The Spina di Rosula initiated rescue operations as quickly as possible, but there have been... a lot of casualties. Fortunately... The water began to recede after some time, and the chaos came to an end. The water that flooded the area contained primordial seawater, so the lower levels of Poisson are still hazardous. 
To ensure everyone's safety, I've asked the people there to leave as soon as possible. No one knows if this could happen again. All we can do for now is try our best to help evacuate the residents. We still haven't completed the head count, but we'll have some numbers soon. How awful! And all of this just came out of nowhere! No, not out of nowhere, but... It was quite frightening indeed. Not just out of nowhere. I only wish that everything that just happened was a bad dream. Is there any way we can help Nadia? Thank you Please. for being so willing to help in a moment of crisis like this. You don't know how much it means to me. I really can't express how grateful I am. Please tell me, please, 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 please tell me. I was really hoping not to. We've got a situation here. I'll be right there. Sorry, I need to go for now. And off she goes. Seems it might be a while before she can take a break. Please, no. Okay, the wounded are being tended to, and we finished a preliminary headcount. More support has just arrived, so I suppose I finally have a moment to focus on my own matters. Uh, of course, we should remain ready for anything and continue no, doing no. our best to rescue Please others. Please tell me they're alive. I'll be sure to have everyone at the Spina di Rosula ready to render assistance. Tell me you didn't witness them die. Would you two accompany me to my father's grave for a moment? Huh? Right now? Thank you. Oh, I don't think I'm ready to go. Oh no, how could you? Oh yeah, how could you? Where am I at? I don't lost. I don't wanna go. No. Oh, no, 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 not the samba music. I'm not ready for this, please. Please tell me you're lying. Not a lot of people here, huh? Well, given the time of day and the whole situation in Poisson, Paimon doesn't think there'd be a ton of people here visiting graves. Right. That's how things are now. The living are so exhausted that they've no strength to spare any words for the dead. Um, Nadia? <laughs> Nadia, what's wrong? 
sorry. I... I just... Oh, oh. Maloose and Silver... They won't ever come back here again. Do it. What should I do? Oh. <laughs> huh? Oh. What happened to them? Oh, perfect. Everyone so agreed on the rescue plan, but still... I was the one who initiated it. They were helping evacuate the residents, but they couldn't leave in time. And, and they were caught in the seawater. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, what should we do? I've known them for so long. And I know they weren't afraid. But, I barely ever see them, but I could at least hold a funeral for my father, and I know where he rests. But as for Malus and Silver, they're just gone. I just can't. Everything looks so clean after it rains, even the gravestones. I didn't expect that you'd enjoy a glass of red wine in front of Master Callus's grave. I can understand. Besides, the scenery here isn't half bad. See, it's not just me. I always want to bring something when I visit Papa. Perhaps we might even have a picnic. He wouldn't be angry, would he? Ah, how could Master ever be upset with you, Demoiselle? Yet, the cemetery is the home of those who have passed, is it not? Everyone ends up here sooner or later, no matter who you are. Buying yourself a plot in advance, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no need yet. But when I do, I hope you'll let me be buried beside Master Callus, demoiselle. Hey! Stop joking around. I'm quite serious. That way, it'll save us both the trip to see each other whenever you visit your father's grave. <laughs> that makes sense. In that case, could I be buried on his other side? After all, besides you, demoiselle, the two of us could certainly be considered Master's closest companions, no? Personally, I believe we fill those shoes just fine. <laughs> Why are you bringing this up all of a sudden? Seriously. All right, all right. I'll remember your requests. But I'd really prefer not to talk about this stuff. And what do you mean by saving me a trip? I'd make the journey even if I had to visit you two somewhere else. I promise to let them rest in peace here. But here I am breaking that promise. <laughs> I'm sorry for letting you see me in a mess like this. I don't usually cry, really. Paimon doesn't know how to help you feel better. But, well, she understands how you feel. I had always thought I could make my wishes come true. But now that I think about it, that never solely relied on me. Many things can only be accomplished with someone else's help. Bruce and Silver have helped me so much, but by contrast, I could do nothing for them. I'm so sorry. You can spend as much time as you need here, Navia. We'll stay with you. Thank you. Right now, you don't know how much that means. By the way, you can have a look at this. It's a list of victims from the incident that took place here. Obana, Khan, Burnett, Giverny, Francine, Karina, Daisy Ray, Joanville, Julianne, Esan, as well as Malus and Silver. So, everyone else is safe. But still... It's okay. I, I know what you're thinking. And... You're right. We lost Malus and Silver. But... 
We were able to save more than we anticipated. The overall outcome indicates that the cost was worth it. Right! Don't think that way, Navia. <coughs> One person might be saved at the expense of another short, but that isn't something we should ever consider a trade. Malus and Silver were not the price for saving anyone. They're heroes. You're right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Paimon. What you said just now was pretty amazing, actually. I'll remember your words. Oh, uh, really? Seems you've become more eloquent in the time since we last met. Uh, what do you want? The knave? What are you doing here? Ah, is everything going well on your side? Yes, my people oh. are carrying out the mission according to your request. All the residents of Poisson have been evacuated, and we're preparing to relocate them to higher ground. As for these supplies, we have everything taken care of. There is no need to worry. Thank you very much. Wait, do you two know each other? You we just met close. recently. Right, Miss Navia? Hmm, usually. I would call this a coincidental encounter, but that oh, doesn't so quite fit can. this time. Besides, it never even crossed my mind that a Fatui Harbinger would come looking for me. I thought this was going to happen a little later. Thanks to the Knave, but... Svina di Rosula received generous support from the Fatui, which allowed us to complete the rescue and evacuation work so quickly. Mutual aid is essential to fostering positive developments. We were already in the area, in any case, so it was nothing. That said, I must say that you're a lot sharper than you let on. I'm sure you understand what I mean. I apologize for all the ways in which I tested you previously. We've never worked with a Fatui before, and it's extremely important for us to know who we're working with. My subordinates have reported that Fatui soldiers have been observing water levels and taking head counts in various locations. I hear that they've also prepared a large amount of emergency supplies. I'm quite surprised. This is nothing to brag about, nor do I intend to. It is simply the way of powerful organizations to act forcefully, whether they are doing good or ill. You've witnessed that firsthand, in any case. As I've told this traveler before, I know of the prophecy, and I intend to prevent the impending disaster. Lending your organization a hand was a natural first step in accomplishing that. As such, do not be troubled by this token of our sincerity. Perhaps one day, you'll also be able to help me in the same way. Without your help, there would have been many more casualties. Oh. I won't forget your kindness. Furthermore, I sincerely regret what happened to Malus and Silver. I only wish that my people could have arrived a little earlier to prevent this from happening. Don't say that. You and your subordinates did everything you could. As Paimon said, Malus and Silver didn't choose to sacrifice themselves for any specific person. And they weren't the price paid for other salvation. They chose to become heroes themselves. I've never liked hearing people put it that way. It's like trying to relieve pain by saying some noble-sounding words. But right now, there's nothing more suitable. They really did become heroes. You're right. I'm sorry for your loss, Miss Navia. Water is life to Fontaine's people, and it also spells disaster. It's no wonder that people always say that prophecies represent fate. Fortunately, I've never been one for such opinions. So, you're one who will try to change fate then? Of course. That is why I'm going to Hotel Bouffe de Terre. I still have some things to take care of, and the children need my attention. By the way, Traveler, Paimon, one more thing. Alright, then we'll just... Uh... Huh? This isn't right. Paimon thought you would ask us to walk with you for a moment so you could tell us something in private. Same here. That is a clever and useful conversation technique, which I do like to use when necessary. But there's no need today. It would not hurt to have Miss Navia listening in. 
Traveler, I'm sure you remember that I said we could work together when we had the chance. You and I both know that there may be issues with the Primordial Sea. Previously, it was the Fortress of Meripede's Sluice Gate, and this time it was the water levels in Poisson. These are both signals. No. Oh, hmm. Indeed. Allow me to share the latest intel I've received from the House of the Hearth's Intelligence Network with you. During okay. some recent investigations, a child claimed to have discovered some ruins near Poisson. The ruins date back to ancient times, and seem to be worth investigating in many ways. Judging by the dating of the ruins, they may be related to the prophecy and the coming crisis. The situation is becoming more urgent, so any pertinent information will prove extremely precious. My people initially came to prepare for ruin exploration. Unexpectedly, this disaster struck. And at present, we're all busy prioritizing the rescue effort. So that's why the Fatui were already in Poisson. I wanted to take the children along, but unfortunately, Linny, Lynette, and Fremene have all been dispatched to higher ground to assist affected residents. Okay. Linny told me that outside of the house, the person they trust most is you. Which is why I want to give you this task. The House Very of the Hearth's members see each other as family. But Linny, Lynette, and Fremenay said that they also see you as such, even though you are not from the house. I'm sure hmm. you already understand how earnest they consider their friendship with you to be. Oh! That somehow makes Paimon feel kind of happy! The intel I just shared about the ruins could fetch a high price. Oh, but since the children consider you family, it's only natural that I freely share it with you. Okay. Go to some ruins, right? Pfft, we can handle that. Excuse me, but may I tag along? Mm -hmm. you wish to join, Miss Navia? But trial Navia. To some I don't ruins? think that's possible yet. Rest. With like, is it possible? Well, I'm sad, yes, but I can't just go back and plop myself into a chair by the roadside and do nothing. There's no point in being depressed while we still have a disaster on our hands. I agree. I agree. I must live up to the hopes he had in me. Besides, Let's go, Navia. I'm also doing this for myself. I need something, a distraction, to keep my mind off Malus and Silver. Yeah. Okay, I I can understand. Me and company right now. This is this is definitely that time you need company. Since you put it that way, I have no objections. What do you say, traveler? All right. The ruins are to the south of Poisson. Here's the map. Okay. Is it underwater? I heard mechanics. I did not hear whatever that was. was talking about? Oh, talk about old. 
They seem to be pretty ancient, all right. Let's go in and have a look. Just be careful. Especially you, Paimon. Place of secrets. Ooh. Yeah, I figured no trial, uh, trial, Navia. Nope, can't climb it. And I can't switch to... Oh, hey, Thun. It sucks. So I don't have Wonder. Which still sucks. Oh, I'm supposed to go down. Water. Oh, water. This place has also been contaminated by primordial seawater. Yep, that's what I thought that was. And a lot of it, too. Spontanian will most likely dissolve the moment they fell in. Right! You can't go down if there's primordial seawater! It's too dangerous and it won't be any help for you to just stay here! Uh, don't get by my wrong. We're not saying mm -hmm. they're useless. It's just that... You're looking out for your safety. You're right. I can't do anything in this situation. I'll leave this to you. complicates things. Maybe the only way left is forward. In that case, yeah. do you want to wait for us here? Mm, uh, the water levels here are unstable, and there's a chance the water will rise. So staying here wouldn't be safe either. I'll go together with you. Perhaps we'll find the exit just up ahead. Yeah, All right. I can't do Come anything. For now, then, but please be careful. Like, seriously. Oh no, it's a dead end. Hmm. Let's try climbing over from the side.
Demoiselle? Huh? Demoiselle, what are you doing here by yourself? Would you be standing here till dark if I hadn't come to get you? Maybe she just wants some time to herself, Malus. Hmm? Oh. Uh, was I... Was I sleeping? Yes, it would appear so. Uh. I must be tired. That's quite possible. However, you were the one that suggested we go out for a walk. Oh, right. I nearly forgot. <sighs> it must have slipped my mind when I dozed off. I haven't had a nap today yet. Uh, have I? This is a familiar feeling, yet something's a little strange. Is something the matter, demoiselle? Oh, uh, no. No, I'm fine. I was just trying to recall why we came out for a walk. Do you remember Mr. Giverny? He'd requested our help before with foreign merchants who had a debt dispute with him, and we'd resolved the matter not long ago. Okay. We were headed to see how things were going with him at the moment. Okay. Right. Yes. I remember now. Oh? Miss Navia. Ah, Mr. Malus. And Mr. Silver, too. <laughs> it's good to see all of you. Uh, how have you been? I've been great. Thanks to your help, those bothersome merchants finally realized that I wasn't the one they were looking for. Why, I wasn't even the guarantor for that person. They were knocking at my door day and night. Even my neighbor, Obuna, was getting fed up with them. Sometimes, force is required to calm someone down and get them to listen to what you have to say. <laughs> That's right. Oh, by the way, Burnett, what was it that you wanted to give to Miss Navia again? Oh, oh yes. Wait. One moment, I have it right here. Miss Navia, these are some flower seeds that I prepared. Please take them. They're a very good variety, and they'll become very big and beautiful once they bloom. I don't know what we would have done without your help, so this is a little token of our appreciation. I hope you won't refuse. Ah, did you cultivate them yourself? Thank you so much. I'll certainly take them. Baloos, we do still have some empty flower pots at home, right? Why, we can have as many pots as you'd like, demoiselle. Perfect. In that case, we'll swap out some of the decorative plants for some of Mrs. Burnett's flowers. Very well. Wait. Something seems to be off here. Very, very Excuse off. me, madam. If I'm not mistaken, your name is Burnett, correct? That's right. Is something wrong? Ah, uh, no, it's nothing. 
This is the first time we've ever met, but your name seemed familiar to me. I must have heard it when I was discussing things with your husband previously. I've heard this name before. Sometime recently, I'm sure of it. And why are there so few people around here? Where did everyone go? We must mind the time, demoiselle. We still have important things to attend to today. Huh? Uh, we do? Like what? Well, now, did you forget? Miss Navia! Here you are! I've been looking for you. Please, come to the Opera House. Your trial is about to begin. Wait. Mm, my trial? Oh, wait. Well, why would I need to go to the Opera House? Yes, she's right, Demoiselle. It's just about time now, so we should get going. Oh? Uh, all right, then. What the heck is going on? Look, it's Navia! She's here! And her two attendants are with her! <sighs> Goodness, everyone's finally here. There sure are a lot of people here to see the trial. And they all seem to be oddly... excited about something. I even know some of these people. Karina, Desiree, Joyville, Jolien, Essen. Why are so many people here? And why do I have no recollection of this case? And as for the judge... Uh, huh? Where's Mr. Mm -hmm. Nubilet? Please sit in the defendant's seat. Don't worry, Silver and I shall accompany you. All right. But are you sure you can stand behind me? Typically, it wouldn't be allowed, but today is an exception. I wonder why. What is going on? They better not see your father. Hey, what kind of place do they think this is? Come on. Do they have any idea what they're doing? Seriously. <sighs> Enough with the whispering. <sighs> Could someone please tell me where Monsieur Nervillette is? And why I'm standing trial? My dear Miss Navia, have you not yet realized what you've done? In that case, allow me to explain. As all here know, you are Master Callus' successor, the head of the Spina di Rasula, someone held in high regard by every soul in Poisson. After you took over the Spina, you treated all of us just like the late Master Callus had. If anyone in need reached out to you for help, you responded. Not only you, but your butler, your subordinates, Nearly everyone in the Spina di Rasula fought for the well-being of those in Poisson. <laughs> Wait a moment. Aren't you just proving that I'm a good person? Yes, correct. Absolutely right. And that is why you stand accused. You <laughs> have helped so many people get through so <coughs> many difficulties. You are one with us. We are inseparable. We are one big family, all of us who are from Poisson, inextricably linked. And with you being so important, we couldn't possibly do without you. Therefore, this fair and honorable court shall declare you guilty, and you shall stay here. You will be together with us forever. Huh? Oh. What oh, that's the sea talking. Uh, uh... Everything Ew. you have said is correct. I have indeed done a lot for my hometown, and I would be willing to be with you all, but Disgusting. what is the purpose of having me stand here like this? What is there to discuss? Oh, well, if that's what you think, then I have no further comments. <gasps> How wonderful, Miss Navia! <laughs> <laughs> I know all these people. Why are they laughing? I seem to remember now. Yes, I get it. This trial is... 
Silver, what's going on? Wait just a moment. This isn't right. Malouse, Silver, tell me what's what going on. Was that, Mr. Malouse? Our conclusion is very clear and unanimous. Let the court judge her now. She's guilty. Stay here, Navia. You're one of us. Demoiselle, don't admit guilt. This trial means to keep you here forever. I wish to exercise my right to defend Our Lady. Mr. Zronville, you only know of Navia's goodness, but nothing of her utterly independent mind. She was born a free and independent spirit. She has never been tied down by anything. Indeed, even the death of Master Callus couldn't stop her. Her actions cannot serve as proof that she identifies herself as part of any group. She merely acted as an individual, extending her hand to help others. So I was right, it is this you talking what those words are going on. This is creepy. Really? As an individual, you say? Don't forget, we are all Fontanians here. This is the nation of justice, the nation of Hydro. Even if Miss Navia only voluntarily rendered her assistance, that doesn't change the fact that her beautiful soul must return to everyone. Water accepts all, blends with all. It will surely accept her kindness. Everything is measured here in the nation of Hydro, and in the end, everyone shall meld together. Thus, when a unanimous opinion emerges, that opinion represents justice. Now, I speak for everyone. Our opinion is consistent. Navia should stay. We and Navia are one. And you would call this justice? Preposterous. You are merely jealous that Demoiselle still has a chance to exist as an individual. Have you forgotten how much you all once longed to become individuals, to become independent? Do you mean to defy our justice? If your justice is flawed, then why should we acknowledge it? As you said, we can also have our own justice. Silver and I shall defend Demoiselle. And that is how we will enforce justice. Ugh, my head... It hurts. Demoiselle. Silver, it hurts. My head is spinning. All I can see is stars swirling in front of me. I remember now. Everything that seemed odd from the very beginning. Karina, Desiree, Joyville, Jolien, Essen. And Mr. Giverny and Mrs. Burnett, who we met earlier. Even Malouse and Silver. I don't want to admit it, but... But they're all dead. Don't be afraid. And don't admit guilt. We will protect you to the very end. Absurd! Who are you to say that she cannot be judged? We are the majority, and in the nation of trials, the majority is absolute justice. We are the will of all. Don't let them escape! We shall keep Navia here with us! Mr. Malouse and Mr. Silver, must you be so stubborn? How could the two of you possibly hope to stand against the Collective? Do not resist. This judgment is fair and just. Navia belongs to us. After all that happened, she should not be left alone in Poisson. What are you saying? No more excuses. She says we're jealous. Jealous? <laughs> How could she possibly be an independent individual? What's with these people? Who's jealous of her? She belongs to us, Miss Navia. She... Silence. Uh, that's... Uh, Monsieur Nervillet! Such commotion is prohibited in the court. The accusations you just presented are nonsense and cannot constitute a proper trial. The court will adjourn for the rest of the day. In this, I shall hear no objections from any unauthorized party. 
Our thanks, Monsieur Nervillet. Please leave with me, Miss Navia, while there is still time. But... Go on now, demoiselle. This is your only chance to leave this place. What, can't bear to leave us behind or something? Loose. <laughs> My apologies. I couldn't resist making one little joke once I realized that this shall be our last goodbye. Malouse. Silver. Quickly, you must come now. Goodbye. The mother. Farewell. No, wait! Just a second! Uh, Navia? <laughs> You're awake. Good. Uh, I must have been dreaming. Malus and Silver were still alive, and they were... They were defending me at some insane trial. It looks like you're all right. Did all the sad feelings cause you to have a nightmare? Baimon could give you a hug. The ruins you were exploring suffered a cave-in. When I arrived, I found you falling toward the water. You were just about to be dissolved within, but I... Hmm. Hmm? What is it? I think I saw two Oceanids protecting you. It was only for a moment, perhaps even a fraction of a second, but they gave me the chance to retrieve you. Were it not for their intervention, I would not have been able to rescue you before your consciousness dissipated. Wait, did you say Oceanids? You mean like what happened with Vache? Perhaps those two Oceanids were the people you saw in your dream. Huh. I always told them that they didn't have to protect me. <laughs> to think that they'd keep doing so even after death. <sighs> Please come with me. Nevelet, are you okay? Hmm? Oh, I am quite all right. Perhaps there's something we could chat about? Why do you look so stiff all of a sudden? Oh, Paimon knows. You're the type who feels awkward when there's nothing to talk about, right? I merely thought that we should give Navia some time to herself. Huh? Why didn't you just say so then? Don't you think it's even more awkward to call us over like this and then have nothing to talk about? Hmm... I suppose so. Ah, oh, Sijuin! I hope all is well with her these days. Her work in the Fortress of Meropede has not been too much for her, has it? No way! Don't worry! She's doing fine down there. She's an amazing head nurse. I see. Well, that is good. I have always worried that Sijuin would need a lot of time to understand the world of humanity, just as I have. Oh, and the Duke also says hi! Even though Sijuin made him do that, he hopes that you haven't been overwhelmed by all that's happened lately. Thank you. I have indeed been busy lately, and I also hope that everything is going well in the Fortress of Meropede. Uh, he still doesn't know what to talk about. Uh... Let's chat about something else, then. So, Nevelet, uh, you're probably quite the swimmer, huh? Mm hmm Yes, of course. going anywhere uh let's try something else um how did you find these ruins did the knave tell you yes in fact i had arranged to meet you in poisson but when i arrived i discovered that the fatui were helping the residents evacuate they had even transported a large quantity of supplies to the area 
Amid my astonishment, I ran into the nave, and we had a chat. She informed me that she had asked you to investigate the ancient ruins here. Yeah, we originally planned to meet up with you, but we thought you might still be busy with all those official documents. We didn't think exploring the ruins would take very long, and who would have thought you'd wrap things up so quickly? <sighs> I'm sorry to have kept you all waiting like that. I'm feeling much better now. I guess we should get going again. Will you come with us, Monsieur Neuvillette? Yes, if you wouldn't mind my company. Thank you. 
Looks like we've reached the end. This is the place? There should not be any other hidden spaces in the vicinity. The path sure had some twists and turns, but it turns out that this place isn't actually that big. Stone slates? It seems like they were put here as an offering. Uh, could we take them down and have a look? Uh, perhaps we should just leave them be for now. Hmm. There are four locations in total, but only three stone slates. The slate that should be in the first empty spot is missing. And the surrounding walls also show signs of damage. There's... Something written below. Let Paimon see. Uh, reason dictates that this nation be destroyed. I shall record the history of its future here in its past. Uh, say what? It feels like someone left these slates and these words here for a purpose. But does he mean that Fontaine should be destroyed? That would fit the circumstances dictated by the prophecy, yes. Indeed, the slate's contents correspond to it. Take the second slate, for example. There's a person kneeling here. She seems so dedicated. And there's a whole bunch of other people behind her doing the same. She's facing this... Uh... What is this? Some kind of island in the sky? And is that... Lady Farina in the third image? Did the Hydro Archon fall into the water? And is that a ring of people around her? Baima doesn't quite get it. Are they all in the water? The fourth image. I know this one. This exactly matches the content of the prophecy. The people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain. Weeping on her throne. Hmm. More information should be hidden in these slates, but I fear I cannot easily uncover it, most likely due to us missing the first slate. I am very sorry. Don't blame yourself, Monsieur Nervalet. Deciphering ancient stone slates isn't one of your duties. Ooh, Paimon's getting the chills just looking at these slates. This says that it's the history of the future, right? That means the prophecy's sure to come true. Uh, I really hope it doesn't mean that. Still... 
Paimon feels like these images are kind of weird when you look at them together. Huh. Hmm. That's right! If the images are in chronological order, shouldn't the fourth, the waters drowning Fontaine, come before the third? Where the Hydro Archon herself falls into the water? And yet the order is reversed here. If we go by timing, Lady Farina only emerges in the third image. That means that the person in the second image might be the previous Hydro Archon. Egeria, then. I had never met her. But her appearance here does match the records. The previous Archon kneeling before the floating island in the skies, as if confessing a sin. Did she herself commit that sin? And if not, why would she be in such a posture? Also, I'm still wondering why these ancient stone slates are here at all. Judging from their contents, could this place be the origin of the prophecy? <laughs> Does that mean that someone, or some people, once saw these slates? But who would have created these slates and left these words here? Hmm. It seems that any further clues will have to come from Farina. In that case, there's no time to lose. There's nothing else to be gained here, so let's head back first. Yeah. We'd better get somewhere safe for now. Let's split up here. I'm going to check on what's happening with Espina. You know how it is. There's some things you just need to be there for yourself. You still have energy for that, Navia? Paimon's already beat! <sighs> just head back to the Fluff Zandra and have a rest then. Thanks for keeping me company all this time. I'll depart as well. Thanks for your hard work today. Rest well, everyone. Traveler, I will go talk to Farina tomorrow morning to ask about the stone slates. I'm sure that you're concerned about this matter as well. If you have time, drop by my office. I will share the results of our discussion with you. Are you really gonna talk to her about this directly? Will that be a problem? Ugh, Paimon's getting a little scared now that it's come to this. She has long been harboring secrets, and will not give them up easily. Which makes it all the more my duty to ensure that she understands the present situation. Alright, we'll leave it in your hands then. You're probably the best person to talk to her anyway. I will be carefully considering my words tonight. Traveler, Paimon, our safe house at the Flivsandra is always open to you, as ever. So please don't think you're an imposition. <sighs> All right. I'll be on my way then. Ah, we're finally back! Welcome back. We've got a special menu prepared for you two tonight. It 
It's you two. What are you doing in Fontaine? Seriously, nobody just uses a scry glass whenever they've got time to just see who they'll meet on the road. Still, we didn't expect to see you here. Uh, wait, you're not a Fontanian, are you, Mona? Well, I have some business to attend to here, so I booked a hotel in the city. I was just out for a stroll when I bumped into you. Quite unexpectedly, if I might add. Why did you think I was from Fontaine, though? Is that because Magistus doesn't sound much like a mom's daughter surname? Uh, yeah, let's go with that. Well, I used to have my own surname, which was, well, some other thing. Either way, the old hag told me when she took me as her disciple that the first step to being a great astrologist's pupil was to change that name. There was nothing for it, really. She really is amazing at astrology, so I changed my name to what it is now according to her wishes. To my surprise, however, Magistus is not the name of some ancient house or clan. Uh, it isn't? Nope. Although it is used by us in place of surnames, it generally just means great. Wow! Imagine including a boast in your name. Wait, are you gonna have to put that into your genealogy as well? I reckon so. In any case, I'd give my disciple a name like this as well, if I were to take one. Astromancer Barbaloth Trismegistus. Whoa, that's a long one. Does it also mean great or something? My name means Mona the Great Astrologist. As for the old hag, hers is, in plain speech, the thrice as great scholar of the stars. Just take it as a title specific to astrologists. Thrice as great? That's so... petty. I know, right? <sighs> That's just how she is. She used to call herself Magistus, actually, but once she took me in, she changed her name to Trismagistus. Talk about excessive. Magistus is thus the calling card of our school, so to speak, which makes it about the same as a surname. It's all right if you don't get it. You can look into it further should you need to study astrology more deeply. This is terrible! Ugh. But anyway, you're not Fontanian, are you, Mona? You're from Mondstadt, right? Well, I was born in Mondstadt, yes. My parents migrated to Dorman Port, and I traveled with the old hag for a while, after which I settled down in Mondstadt City. Oh, that's a good thing then. At least we know you won't be dissolved by Fontaine's waters. Hmm, speaking of that, I'm sure you're aware that a bunch of things have happened here in Fontaine, right? I know you're not a local, but I'd avoid getting too close to any water that looks strange all the same. There's something ominous about it. Well, the water, I mean. That was the main reason, yes. Just a while back, the Steambird invited me to take part in a panel and speak about the circulation of the prophecy as an astrologist. The invitation was sent quite early on. I don't think anyone expected Fontaine to be in this much trouble. What do you make of that prophecy, Mona? Just tell us what you think as an astrologist. Your word would go a long way to make things more certain and less... scary. What I can tell you is that I'm an astrologist. And that this prophecy concerns the fate of Fontaine. Even that of all Tevat. Ascertaining this is akin to reading the fortune of the whole world. I'm afraid that this is not something that just anyone can do. If I could... But on the flip side... The prophecy is so huge and powerful that it must surely come from a powerful visionary. Its contents involve the fate of the world. Disregarding it would be a mistake. A visionary? Sounds really powerful and all, but does such a person really exist? Of course. 
the old hag could do it. And I'd bet there are others amongst those Hex and Zerkel colleagues of hers who could do something similar. Are you sure? Hmm... All right, I'll help you. It isn't often that I see you with such a serious look on your face. I'll tell you once I hear back from her. Thanks, Mona! You're amazing as always! Oh, well, this is something only I can do after all. So yes, your praises are quite welcome. That's the greatest of astrologists for you! Indeed, indeed. <laughs> That's the spirit. Oh, sorry. I came to see what all the commotion was about. If there's anything you need, do not hesitate to inform the Spina di Rosula. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Guess we were getting a little too carried away there. Well, I'll go tend to my own business now. If I receive any news, I'll be sure to come find you two again. And there she goes, quick as rushing water. And here we are with the Spina guy giving us suspicious looks. Uh, if Paimon hadn't spoken for you, it'd be you getting all the weird looks! Huh! The thing Paimon does for you! Hmm, <laughs> that's more like it! <sighs> but it's time to get up, Traveler. We agreed to go see Nivellet, so let's pack it up and get going. Monsieur Vervelette and Lady Farina, they, they seem to have gotten into a dispute. Please go see for yourself. Like I said, I've already explained everything. And yet the problem has not been properly solved. There is little space for excuses between us. It is not my intention to offend you, but please, tell me where you stand. You are the Hydro Archon Fosalor, are you not? Look at this. This is a list of the victims from the recent Poisson incident. not arrive in time to avert this disaster, and I will not have it happen again. <clears throat> I will say this once more. You must tell me everything you know. Yesterday, I found three stone slates in some ancient ruins near Poisson. 
Do you know anything about those? Seriously? You're questioning me like this is a court case now. I don't know anything about that. But you found them in some ancient ruins, you say? That's correct. Which is why I came to ask you some questions. There should have been four slates, but one of them was missing. The other three feature different images that seem to correlate to the prophecy. <laughs> the prophecy? The second of these slates depicts the previous Hydro Archon Egeria kneeling before a floating island in the sky, as if confessing something. Do you know nothing of this either? I don't! I've never seen such slates! I'll ask you again. Do you really have no information regarding the previous Archon? My deciphering of the slates indicates that the Hydro Archon Egeria once had to confess to, or apologize for, a certain sin. If anyone would know about it, it should be you. All gods don't have the same secrets, you know. She was herself and I'm me. Is it really so strange that I know nothing? I understand your concerns, but I'm sorry. I just don't have anything to tell you. <sighs> Forgive me for saying this now, Lady Farina, but I have long known of your various secret investigations into certain matters. There are several indications that you have been investigating the prophecy on the sly. This is not strange in itself, considering that you are the Hydro Archon. But it is strange that you should also claim to not know any of Egeria's secrets, as well as do nothing following your inquiries. You have never been as superficial as you have presented yourself to be, nor are you a fool. And yet, your behavior is very inconsistent. watching me all this time, have you? I didn't think you were that type. <laughs> you... Well, since you know about my secret investigations, then you should know I'm actually working to take care of it. There's no point questioning or suspecting me. You're the Eudix, but you're still my subordinate. You should be following my lead. Just trust in me, your Archon, and do as I say. Never mind whether you can truly convince yourself to or not, it'll all turn out fine. That's all I have to say. We do not discuss this matter again. Oh, <laughs> the opera's about to start. Toodles! <sighs> Did Farina not notice us standing by the door? Wonder what's up with her. She was smiling. Huh. She didn't seem in the mood to care if we were listening in or not. I assume you've been outside for a while now? Oh! You noticed! Seems Farina didn't even realize we were here. She was in a great panic, though I cannot discern the reason. Our discussion reached impasses time and again, a state of affairs that we cannot allow to continue. Still, I do not understand. Dialogue is the basis for understanding, so why did she keep refusing to engage? Everyone in her inner circle has noticed that she is hiding some secret. The issue is her attitude. I fear that she will not reveal anything unless absolutely forced to. We may have to create a situation in which she will have no choice but to speak. Oh? Like what? Normally, people will only reveal the truth when standing trial. Perhaps we must have the Hydro Archon experience just such a scenario. And she's really good at dodging questions. How do we make sure that she won't just slip away at the first chance she gets? We will need to consider this thoroughly, join forces with various parties, and then do what we can. <sighs>
If at all possible, I would prefer to recuse myself from this affair, but we must prevent the prophecy from coming to pass. This may be cruel to her, but all Fontaine is in crisis. The information a god possesses is too precious, and so we must take a chance on this. Hmm, but who will lend us their aid to do such a thing? Well, that's everyone, huh? Speaking of which, it was pretty smart of you to think of hiding here. Poisson was just involved in a disaster, so it's presently devoid of people. That naturally makes it the best choice. And here you are, drinking tea like it's the most natural thing in the world, huh? That's what family should do. Sit and enjoy a leisurely time together. <laughs> it's nice to enjoy tea here, you know? Care for a cup? Ahem. <clears throat> Lend me your ears, everyone. Hmm. Or perhaps one of you might like to start us off. How about you, friend? Uh, me? I, no. I don't think I can. Hmm. Uh, then, how about you, good sir? I fear that I will cause the mood on this boat to become as somber as it is in court. <laughs> well then, I guess we're lucky we've got a local like me to organize things. Wonderful, the spotlight at last. I guess I'll be facilitating things from here. That was a little long-winded, don't you think? Oh. <laughs> You might be right. Anyway, to cut to the chase, our friend here, the Traveler, has brought us together to discuss something. As for what that is, well, uh, let's start by saying that we'll be pooling our efforts together to create a series of traps. Oh, how intriguing. Well, it's just an expression, really. One that I just learned from Chlorand, and use on the spot. So, let's invite her to explain in detail. A round of applause, please. Huh? Didn't you say that you would be facilitating this? Oh, come now. Your work doesn't involve much public speaking, right? This is a good chance to practice. You might even pick up some fancy oratory tricks to impress your boss with in the future. <laughs> I see. And what does my boss say? Hmm. <laughs> he is glad that you consider him your boss. Do go on. In that case... <clears throat> do any of you have experience... hunting? Not that I recall. Fremine and I once used a wooden stick in a basket to catch wild rabbits when we were younger. As for Lynette, um... Ah, oh, right. You were sick that day, weren't you? Uh, I've also gone diving to catch some fish before. Does that count? Uh, I'm afraid not. You may or may not have heard, but Fontaine once played host to a group known as the Marachose Hunters. Though that was their name, they did not hunt animals, but rather various monsters left behind by the ancient dynasty of King Remus. Today, Fontaine's monster population has already thinned greatly, so the hunters have blended back picking up arms in other lines of work. They even left a unique methodology of hunting in their wake. A trap comprises of the following components, bait, a trigger, and a containment device. Sometimes a lethal implement will also be necessary to deal with the prey. So, if we were to build a trap together, right now, what would you choose to build it with? For me, I would prefer something basket-shaped. Pigeons and rabbits will see the bait and naturally enter the snare. Our line of work requires a deft hand, and we're some of the best in the industry, so you can count on our techniques. You used some of those techniques while moving the people of Poisson, didn't you? My subordinates mentioned that you even performed some magic for the bawling children. Yes, and I even managed to gather some intelligence in the meantime. I'm quite the multitasker if I do say so myself. I'm afraid I can't claim that as my strong suit. 
I prefer more stable methods, like placing bait in the water and waiting for the fish to come within reach. That's the kind of method I would count on. <laughs> Calm and steady. Exactly the kind of person who would catch loads of fish. And I can be their assistant. With discretion, I'm sure. Hmm. I'd probably use some sort of mechanical animal. Papa once bought me some small clockwork squirrels, mice, and such. When placed in the forest, they can attract others of their kind. I remember that you liked those too, didn't you? I did. And that would be a good way to go about it. If they're realistic enough, animals of the same kind will follow them all the way to the trap. What about you, Monsieur Nevelet? I fear I do not have any related experience. Hmm. That makes sense. You usually solve problems directly, without the use of any such tricks. But I do have one more question for you, Monsieur. If we were to create a trap now, how would you design it? Hmm. I would like for it to be effective, but bring no harm to the prey. A more gentle trap would be ideal. Hmm. Kind, as always. However, our intention doesn't necessarily change the containment device and the type of implement we need. If we wanted to kill the prey in one strike, we would need a powerful implement. However, that also goes for prey that must be captured and safely contained. Wait, why is that? Only a hunter who's a true expert at subduing their prey can snare it without harming it. The line that divides life and death is often exceedingly thin. Uh, so are we going hunting together? Huh. We hadn't thought of seeing ourselves as hunters. It kinda works, but maybe it's still not the best metaphor. If our means of capturing and dealing with our prey is to put them on trial, and the hunting metaphor is actually quite accurate. But we shall require much more courage than any hunter to judge a god, a being whose seat is an exalted throne. Oh, so that's what's going on. Sounds very interesting. few days, hasn't it? So much has been happening. <sighs> Hyman didn't think the meetings would go on for so long, but everyone seemed pretty fired up, huh? Hyman thought they'd be at least a little frightened. Well, Fremine was, now that Hyman thinks about it, but everyone else just looked a little surprised. Thing. But with you around, Hyman sure will do great. After all, you're the most reliable person in the world, aren't you? <laughs> uh, huh? Uh, did 
Did you just pour some tea? Paimon didn't notice you doing that at all! <laughs> then what's that? Paimon's never seen that cup before! Don't be frightened. I'm just joining you two for tea. I merely refrained from saying anything till now. <laughs> Who's that voice? Uh, but there's no one here! Ah, have you forgotten me already? Wait, you are familiar. You're the voice we heard from the sky in Sumeru. <laughs> the voice from the sky, hmm? I fear that description is wrong. Though, not completely wrong. Huh. You're feeling lost now, just as you were feeling previously. I sensed that confusion and thus came to you. Guiding people is an irresistible hobby of mine, after all. Hmm. Consider me a passerby, just accepting a commission from my friend's disciple on a whim. The prophecy. Yes, what has been prophesized will be fulfilled. You may view such things as the history of the future. What? The, then is there any way we can stop it? I believe you have witnessed a failed attempt with your own eyes. Can everything in Tavat so easily be changed? Ah, so you've caught on. Just as prophecies are usually only the future as seen from the perspectives of the gods, could things be happening in hidden corners where the gods' gaze does not fall? Are the things that you shall see different from the fate that the gods perceive? What is she talking about? It all sounds really impressive and important and stuff, but... It also sounds kind of scary. I believe that you understand, right? Some things are insignificant, but others you must reach out to change. Ultimately, fate shall serve as your only guide, no matter what will happen in Tavat's future. All you need to do is to play your part. Hmm. This was good tea, by the way. Thank you for your hospitality. Well, that'll be all for today. The voice... It's gone! Walked in on some lively banter. Luna! Fine, just fine. I went to take part in that Steambird panel. It turned out to be more interesting than I expected. Not all Fontanians are pessimistic about this. One journalist mentioned that sitting around and waiting for the end to come would be wrong, and that they should make their own rescue preparations. I agreed, so we had a brief chat with her. Did she have pink hair by any chance? Why, yes! It was Charlotte! You remember her, right? That daredevil journalist? I'm in full support of her view. Prophecies are very important, but... How can people allow their lives to be commandeered by just a few words? That's right! Paimon's glad to hear something sensible for once! Ah, yes. About what we had discussed before. I did try, but I'm afraid I couldn't reach the old hag. I'll try again tonight, but I wouldn't get your hopes up. Huh? Goodness gracious! Are you serious? She said that even the god's gaze has blind spots. Pretty bold if you ask Paimon. Most people would believe the gods to be all-knowing, right? 
The Hex and Circle members are certainly anything but ordinary. As for the mage named N, the old hag has mentioned her a few times. She said that N's sense of direction is incredible, and that she loves guiding those who are lost. But I've never met her, and if she were still alive, she'd be... <laughs> well, suffice it to say that the hag's at least a few hundred now, and N's been around for longer than that. Whoa. The Hexen Circle sounds like a scary group. But they must really stay in shape to live so long. Their abilities alone are pretty terrifying. If she came to see you personally, then the problem you're facing must truly be of great importance. Well, it's not like Paimon could understand anything she said. Yes, she was quite cryptic, but I suspect she means that there is still a way to turn things around. She didn't say when or what that would be, though, so... Perhaps it is something that you cannot know right now. Traveler? Paimon? Are you two alright? Oh, we're fine. We're just a little down right now. It kind of feels like the end is coming, you know? I see. I feel that same sense of desperation, too. I guess you could consider me someone who has often witnessed fate. So far as I have seen, it cannot be swayed. But even so, I still hope for, and believe in, miracles. Astrology is eternal and rational, but fate may not be. It is cruel, but it can also be beautiful. Perhaps that's what N was trying to tell you. Not to lose heart, and to believe that what you are seeing playing out before you is not yet set in stone. I did originally think of steering clear of all this, but I couldn't. Even if this is all futile, I still wish to help everyone. If we don't struggle to the last, then how can we face the end when it comes? Huh. You do have a point. <laughs> there I go, talking about astrological principles again. <laughs> Sorry about that. The moment I start talking about work-related stuff... I oh, I need to get going. It was worth trying to comfort you, even if only a little. I believe that you'll help those who are struggling in the same way I did. I suppose that might be why we always seem to meet by coincidence. Paimon feels kind of moved by what Mona said, but also kind of sad, too. Hey, Traveler, Paimon suddenly feels like going outside for a walk. Let's go. Let's walk around the city, shall we? There's a few spots we always like to walk by. has continued in its noble autonomy, but that does not mean that others cannot interact with it. My recent attempts to enter the fortress bore little fruit. Huh. Guess Charlotte still hasn't given up on that. Thus, did an Alvander friend become the focus of this report? A blind adventurer with their white fairy legends trailing in their wake. It is said that this mysterious traveler once visited the underwater fortress. So while the fortress's interior remains a mystery behind closed doors, do not fear, for the tales of the traveler contain surprises in spades. Journalist Charlotte's biggest scoop yet, The Traveler's Trail, World Walker. Huh. Charlotte took so many awesome photos of us and we never even noticed her! She hasn't been able to get a hold of anything at the fortress, so since we're easier to find, she's using us as the subject matter instead? Ugh, seriously? Well, fine. 
Those headlines and photos do look cool, so Paimon will forgive her this time. situation we were in. Let's give it another go. I'm sure it'll be great. One slice of cake, please. <sighs> Someone showed up after all. Oh, wait. You're the one from the Palais Mermonia. Oh, are you here to buy cake, too? <laughs> it seems Monsieur Nervalette was right. You really can eat. Wait. Did I really say something like that? That's right. Even he has his own preferences when it comes to food. As for me, I love the cake and coffee here. Do you come here often? Mm -hmm. Usually every day. Every day? It's part of my daily schedule, apart from work. I shall have my cake and coffee. Uh... Then what if someone told you one day that this place would be closing soon, and you wouldn't get to eat cake here anymore? What would you think? But why would it close? Well, Paimon doesn't know either, but... Maybe... Maybe the waters will rise tomorrow. You know, like in the prophecy. Oh, the prophecy. Um, to be honest, I haven't paid much attention to that. No, still, even if there'd be no more cake tomorrow, that wouldn't keep me from having some today. No, no, it's the same for eating in general. You might not be able to eat tomorrow, but if you can do so today, then you should carry on. That's what people call living, you know. Huh. Don't be sad. Excuse me, could I have two more slices of cake to go? These two slices are for you. Sijuin said that this kind of expression you're making is what humans call being sad. Oh, you know Sijuin? I sure do. Mm -hmm. She was born before me, and she sometimes comes to the surface to teach us things about humans. She said that humans are creatures that are saddened easily, yes, and you can only lift their spirits by feeding them delicious food. So please try the cakes here. I've got something else to do, so I'll be going now. You two try to stay in a good mood after eating, all right? <laughs> Bye! And there she goes! All right, let's dig in. I'm unsure this cake will be delicious. It's more delicious than last time! And the flavor gets even better with the sip of tea! It sure would be nice if we could come again tomorrow! Sure would be nice if we could always eat delicious food here. some time back, so I sent you a letter to discuss just that. It appears you didn't receive it, though. It's all right, though. I've set aside the amount intended for you. I've even set the table with some food. Really? 
Journalist with ulterior motives, you'd be in trouble now, you know. Oh, Paimon knows you're not like that. Still, what brings you here all of a sudden? Were you looking for me? When Mona mentioned you, we thought of coming to see you at work. <laughs> I see. It seems you've already bumped into Mona here in Fontaine. So she mentioned me? What did she say? She said that you're a real daredevil of a journalist. <laughs> nice. In which case, can this daredevil journalist dare to request an exclusive interview with the legendary traveler and Paimon? Huh? So your article in the paper today doesn't count? Oh, of course it doesn't. That was more like live photography. What I'd like to do is dive deeper and ask you to talk about the things you've seen and experienced. Yeah, are we even qualified? If I say you're worth an interview, then you're worth it. But not right now, of course. I'll need a few days to prepare. Oh, in that case, we'll just chat when you have the time then? Oh, so that's a yes? Oh, splendid! I'll tell the editor-in-chief immediately. I'll have to apply for lighting, a venue, some props, and... <laughs> oh, so much to get done now. Talk to you later. Wait, Charlotte, Paimon's still got a question for you. Hmm? And what's that? If, just for example, Fontaine were to be flooded tomorrow, what would you do today? Huh, that's the prophecy you're talking about, isn't it? I mean, I do hear about it often, but I've never once thought that the day could be tomorrow. If you're seriously asking, then I might try and think of a way to leave Fontaine. Oh, but I'm still a journalist, first and foremost. That means I have a duty to be reporting from the scene. And secondly, I wouldn't forsake my homeland that easily. From what I've seen, most people don't know what they'd do should the worst come to pass. In truth, it might be better just to behave like normal rather than worry over such an end. So in all likelihood, I'd probably still be prepping at the office for that interview of ours. I know what you're thinking. That sounds a bit sad, but I've always believed that it's best to do what you enjoy. Just think about it. If this nation really were to be suddenly destroyed tomorrow, but I still successfully finish an exclusive interview with a truly unique person, then the story I would wind up writing would truly be timeless. And then do you know what I'd do? Well, I'd write that story, send it for printing, and use messenger pigeons to get copies out to the various nations as soon as possible. I'm not a dreamer, nor am I a workaholic. But I do love my job, and I'd be proud of leaving such an article behind. I guess you could say that I was born to be a journalist. But anyway, that's my answer. And on that note, I'll get back to my preparations. That's so nice. All of a sudden, Paimon actually kind of envies her. Anyway, let's go and take a look at the sea, shall we? Scenery can be a pretty soothing combo, huh? Um, Paimon's been thinking. If it wasn't Fontaine, but all of Tevat that would be destroyed tomorrow, where would we go and what would we do? No, Paimon should ask, if you could choose, what would you like to do? We've always been moving to the next destination, so we haven't spent much time thinking about these kinds of things. We didn't have to either, with us always being on the road and whatnot. You mean... still traveling? Huh. Wait, isn't that what we've always been doing?
looks like you'll grow mold if you stay here long enough. But it's still better than the Fortress of Meripede, that's for sure. It's not only damp there, but salty too. Ah, oh, so the two of you are still here. Wonderful. Oh, you're from the Palais Mermonia, aren't you? Yes, I'm Isadora. Monsieur Nervilac sent me to look for you two before. I heard that afterward you went to the Fortress of Meropede. <laughs> Not at all. I'm well aware that you're friends of his. Actually, I'm here to pass along a message from him. Yes, inside the Opera House. The Mari Chaussee Phantom has declared the incident a small-scale riot. A riot? Well, that said, I don't personally think it was that serious. Lady Farina was watching a performance at the Opera House, and while she was resting during an intermission, some other audience members suddenly started harassing her. Loudly accusing her of doing nothing about the prophecy crisis. And before she could respond, others started to join in. The crowd continued to grow, and protests against the Hydro Archon started to break out. So people have started to put the blame on Farina. Guess they finally found an outlet for the pressure they've been under due to the prophecy. I agree. People will naturally rely on gods, as is customary. But the moment people feel threatened, gods are also the first to be blamed. So what happened after that? Is Farina okay? Seeing that the situation was spiraling out of control and that further argument was pointless, she claimed that she'd gotten tired of this and left in a hurry. The Marichose Phantom had their hands full maintaining order and did not catch where Lady Farina had gone. Only when things had stabilized did we realize that she had gone missing. So, you mean she's still missing? That's right. The Marichose has dispatched many people to search for her. But we don't have any leads yet. That said, I don't think there's much to worry about. She is a god, after all. Even if she were to fall into the hands of rioters, what could ordinary people do to her? Good. Monsieur Nervilet sent me to tell you about the situation, but he didn't say anything else. Don't worry. This is more than enough to go on. Thanks for keeping us informed. Ah, oh, is that so? Well, all right then. In that case, you two take care. I'll be heading back to the Palais now. Well, sounds like we should hurry over to Poisson then. If we know Farina, she won't try to fix things in this situation. Instead, she'll look for a place to wait out the heat. As we also know, she may be loud and dramatic, but she doesn't have a heart of stone. When Nervale was talking to her in the Palais Mermonia, and she heard about Poisson, she couldn't hide her sadness and remorse. It would be hard for her to ignore being accused by the public today. Paima thinks Farina's probably taken the opportunity to slip away to Poisson and try to relieve the sense of guilt that she's feeling. Huh. Well, what do you think? Paima knows the answer, of course, but Paima can do the analysis to back it up, too. Cool, huh? In that case, there's not a moment to lose. Poisson, here we come! This place looks deserted. Guess all the survivors must have evacuated already. All that's left here are signs of devastation. Could Farina really be here? Let's try to find her as soon as possible.
That's Farina, right over there. She really is here all on her own. <sighs> Should I just give up? This is all meaningless. What was meant to happen did happen after all. Everyone's dead. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Give up, Farina. There's no point in holding out. I'm sorry. But what can I even do? Other than to repeat meaningless apologies over and over. Don't worry, Farina. It's just us. <laughs> so, it is you, blonde traveler from another land. Why, I almost thought you were someone from that mob of my ignorant subjects. Come to kneel and beg for my forgiveness. Farina, you were crying just now, weren't you? The tear stains on your face are obvious. Uh... What do you mean, tear stains? Uh, oh, <laughs> I remember. The show at the Opera House earlier this morning was so moving. I'm still trying to process it. <laughs> Who did that uncivilized rabble think they were? Disturbing my enjoyment of the arts. They even dare to doubt their archon. I must teach them a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine their twisted and frustrated faces once they realize that I'm nowhere to be found. Oh, and I'm sure Nouvellette and those people from the Marish to say Phantom are freaking out right next to them, too. <laughs> I... Uh, of course not. Hey, there she is. The Hydro Archon's over there. Quick, after her! Uh, Farina, those people seem to be after you. Uh, they are? Uh, they are just some rabid fans who want to cut the line because they haven't been able to meet me in person, aren't they? Mm, that's against the rules. I can't let them get their way. Uh, Farina just ran off! Quick, we have to catch up with her! Should be the place, right? Hey, Farina! There's a good hiding spot over here. Quick, come to Paimon before the rest of them catch up to you. Uh, wh what? What is this place? Hurry, they're almost here. Fine, fine. I suppose haste is warranted. Lead the way. I totally thought they had caught me. Uh, no, I mean, I merely gave in to the sheer enthusiasm they displayed. <laughs> uh, you're right. Yep, that's a good girl. Uh, what's happening? The ground's shaking. Yeah. A quake of this kind preceded the flooding in Poisson, didn't it? It can't be. It's happening again. Well, there's no need to worry too much about that. 
Nevelette's made some emergency plans, so the evacuation should go a lot smoother this time. Yeah, I hope you're right. But the people of Poisson, they've already... It's true. I've been investigating the prophecy for hundreds of years. I once had informants all over to Vat, searching for clues and feeding information back to me. I've tried all kinds of ways, too, to hold back the sea. Anything to keep the coastline from advancing. But all my efforts proved to be futile in the end. Really, the truth has been clear to me for a very long time. We cannot make an enemy of the Divine. No matter what we do, the will of the Heavenly Principles will have its way, and the prophecy shall be fulfilled. <laughs> Give up. <sighs> I do love the sound of that phrase. It would mean finally coming to terms with fate, but also for me to finally be free. Indeed, I've thought about giving up so many times, especially after we almost lost Poisson. Fate is really unreasonable, isn't it? It has no heart and obeys no rules. The prophecy has only just started to come true, and so many people have already lost their lives. But just now, it all became clear to me. I still don't have the right to come to terms with fate on behalf of everyone else. As long as the final moment hasn't come, it's still not too late. Don't worry. I... I will keep hope alive for everyone until the very end. <sighs> well, that's enough for now. I got the impulse to play the stricken maiden, but honestly, considering my rank and station, that wasn't a good fit at all. <laughs> Don't take any of what I just said seriously. How could I possibly let Fontaine fall to the whims of trivial prophecy? Come on! Paimon could have sworn you were actually being honest just now. Share my burden. <sighs> That's impossible. It was fated right from the start that this would be my duty alone. A witness. Huh. Yes, I've heard that you came to Tevat from beyond the stars, yes. In other words, you never belonged here. And if Tevat is, in its entirety, a show on a stage, then you're just a spectator, aren't you? <sighs> if that's the case... Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes my opening performance. Now, without further ado, we may proceed to the trial of our god. Ah, so this is what it is. Yes, you deserve praise for the effort you took to raise the dramatic stakes. Do not 
forget, however, that I am Thosalor, the god of justice. The embodiment of justice itself. Does it not strike you as even the least bit absurd to bring the very concept of justice to trial? May I interpret these words as your refusal to stand trial? In that case, you will have the opportunity to defend your honor through a duel. You... you would draw your blade against a god? <clears throat> I see. It seems like you have made up your mind. see an Archon surrender to a... a human? Well, how utterly humiliating. Lady Farina, what is the meaning of this? It would seem that there has been a misunderstanding. To be clear, the raising of both hands is not always an indication of surrender. Looking for excuses again, huh? I raised my hands just now to indicate my acceptance of the trial. No duel shall be necessary. I will admit that I've been running away for a long time. I'm sorry, everyone. I was unable to protect the people of Croissant. It is my duty to stand trial for my crimes. You are not the only ones to be disappointed in me. I, too, am exceedingly disappointed in myself. <sighs> but now, it is time for the Hydro Archon to show you her courage and resolve. I, Farina, will use this trial to show the world the true meaning of justice! This time, I will protect you. Applaud and rejoice! One of the most outrageous and fantastical arts known to the opera epic plays is now unfolding before your eyes. Mark my words, this shall be one of the most exhilarating and brilliant shows ever to grace the stage of Fontaine! The trial of the Hydro Archon, Fosalor, will now begin! Woohoo! Oh, now we're making history! <sighs> Why does it feel like Farina just took over the whole thing? Like, come on! Didn't she just get forced to stand trial for her crimes? Also, even though she's still acting super dramatic, she is taking this seriously this time, right? Alright then. Who will be my opponent in this trial? The court asks the prosecutor to please take the stand. Is that so? Very well. Then please speak, witness of Tivat, my accuser and fated opponent. question before the trial begins. Just how much work did you do to force me onto this stage? Well, we did do a lot of prep after the meeting that day. I can go over the tasks assigned to the Spina di Rosula, since they were rather straightforward and easy. Navia, the president of the Spina di Rosula. Most of the people who participated in the disturbance this morning were my subordinates. They changed into plain clothes and came to the Opera House as regular audience members, waiting for the perfect opportunity to incite insurrection against you. The people's resentment against their Archon has been building as more and more of the prophecy is fulfilled. A spark was all we needed to turn smoldering anger into a flame. Moreover, according to our understanding and analysis of you, 
When something like that occurred, you would likely flee the scene and head to Poisson by yourself. So, we arranged for a second group to lie in wait there. So, you mean... The ones who scoured the settlement for me were also from the Spina. And their goal was to force you to step into the giant magic box so you may personally participate in the greatest magic performance in all of Fontanian history. That's right. That house was a magic box rather than someone's residence. As the super ultimate version of the setup that I used when I first performed at the Opera Epicles, the volume of the box was increased by a whole order of magnitude, and the distance it traversed was the entire gap between Poisson and Arrhenius. Its cargo, of course, was an Archon instead of a human. My thanks, Farina. Without your help, we could never have pulled off such an extraordinary performance. Uh, you're welcome? Of course, this performance was only made possible with Father's support. The House of the Hearth spent a massive amount of labor in Mora to pull this off. We had to select a location, construct the giant magic box, dig a tunnel, and open up a path through the water. It was a lot of work for all of us. So, in other words, the earthquake that we felt within the giant magic box was just a normal tremor from the transportation of the whole house? That's right. It wasn't a sign of another disaster to come. <laughs> then, I can guess Nervilette and Cloran's parts. You gathered a crowd, prepared a stage, and made sure that the champion duelist would be immediately ready for a fight. Also that as soon as I appeared on the stage, the trial may commence without a hitch. Am I right? Yes, that is correct. Well, Clorand, I must commend you for your courage. Only the most outstanding champion duelist in all of Fontaine would accept a duel with an Archon without flinching. Thank you. As for you, Traveler, I suppose your role was to keep me distracted with conversation once you found me in Poisson. You'd make sure that I didn't notice anything amiss before revealing yourself as my prosecutor once we'd arrived onto the stage. Oh? <laughs> Is that so? Then I suppose I must have missed my final chance. <laughs> It's fine. It matters not. What's done is done. The stage is already set, so there's no reason to disappoint the audience. Let's see this trial through to the very end. Madam Prosecutor, please allow me to pass this along. This is a document that Miss Charlotte applied for and received permission to share with you during the trial. According to her, it should speed up the proceedings. Huh? Charlotte wanted to give us something? Oh, so she's here too! Hey, Charlotte! Oh, let Paimon see. Uh, isn't this the exclusive interview that she did with us before? So she's already finished it, huh? Oh, wait. Then that means this document is a perfect timeline of everything that's happened ever since we stepped foot in Fontaine! So in other words, we can refer to this anthology of evidence every time we want to use something from our journey as evidence for an argument! Let's quickly confirm the information in it. Just think of it as a refresher, alright? You defeated the Hydro Archon in the very first duel you took part in at the Opera House. That's one for the history books, all right. I didn't think that you'd wind up getting to the bottom of the case I've been following all this time. I guess you could also see this as a happy coincidence. This is the first...
first time Monsieur Nervilette had a difference of opinion with the Oratrice. Even the Hydro Archon can't figure it out. But the Tui Harbinger, she's an extraordinary person. Her instinct must mean something. The fortress of Meripede was almost destroyed in a single day. That I didn't witness that scene personally will always be a source of professional regret, I think. According to Monsieur Nouvellet, both child and that whale should have been in the primordial sea at that time. I nearly lost my awesome friend Navia. To be honest, that still gives me shivers. The words of someone as extraordinary as a witch can probably only be truly understood when something surreal happens to you. The prosecution and the defense are both in position. The trial shall now begin. <laughs> oh, come on, Nervilet. There's no need to repeat all the unimportant legalese. Just fast forward to the part where the prosecution lays out my offenses. As the defendant and the lead actress of this performance, I still haven't even been informed of my supposed guilt in all of this. Of course, it is only natural for humans to struggle to understand the actions of a god. However, you will need more than that to convict me of a crime. That's true, but my charge here is unrelated to your conduct as an Archon. Instead, I would like to charge you as a fraud, who has never been the Archon in the first place. Wait, what was that? Lady Verena's a fraud? Hey, I came here thinking that we were going to try the Hydro Archon for forsaking her duty, but did I hear that right? She's not our Archon at all? Charge accepted. Lady Farina, do you plead guilty to the charge? <sighs> Lady Farina. I plead not guilty. How can I be guilty? There is no way that I, Thosalor, otherwise known as Farina de Fontaine, a member of the Seven and the Regina of all waters, kindreds, peoples, and laws of Fontaine, could be anything other than your true Archon. Yeah, even though Lady Farina can be rather eccentric, isn't it going too far to doubt her very identity? Yeah, I've never questioned her identity either. Sure, Lady Farina can be super irresponsible, but, but what grounds does that prosecutor have to make such a huge claim? I have cause to believe that common sense will prevail in this case. Many of the members of the audience have known me as the Hydro Archon ever since they were born. There would be no fooling their memory. See? <laughs> Even the Oratrice has decided to show me its favor! Are you sure you want to commit to a charge that will never be upheld? If you wish to drop the case, I can promise you as the God of Justice that you will not have to face trial for making a false accusation. We will treat everything that's happened as a dramatic spectacle and move on with our lives. What do you say to that? Huh. An argument with near impossible odds, huh? We have to not only refute Farina's claims, but also overturn the long-held beliefs of the people. Well, I tried to give you the chance to surrender. If you must persist, then let me ask. If you believe I'm not the Archon, then what manner of being do you think I am? And if I was not the Archon, then how did I manage to live for over 500 years? Case. First of all, you may be a member. 
member of another long-lived race, which would allow you to naturally possess an extended lifespan. And second of all, even if that wasn't the case, there could be other ways to extend your life. <laughs> Who gave you that idea? Was it the maze? You'd sink so low as to use a harbinger's words against me. A curse. I once thought it possible that the aura of an Archon might naturally resemble a type of curse. But in light of this claim, perhaps what I sensed was not your divinity, but a curse after all. You sensed it too, huh, Nervalet? Lady Farina is actually a human? Well, it is true that it's extremely difficult to tell humans and gods apart just by looking at them. It's not impossible. Well, don't start celebrating too early now. Even if I have been carrying a curse like you said, how does that prove that I am merely a human being? Besides, Everyone knows that the main difference between a human and a god is the possession of authority. Gods can do what humans cannot. That's why they're worshipped as gods. For centuries, manifestations of my authority have served the nation of Fontaine. One need only to turn their eyes towards the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal in this very opera house, or consider the endemidium that is used in every aspect of life. You tried to reference the Oratrice, but weren't you as confused as all the rest of us when the Oratrice declared Child to be guilty without any proof? Otherwise, you should have come up with a good explanation for that by now. Didn't I make myself clear at the time? The decisions of the gods are naturally difficult for humans to comprehend. There is no need to provide an explanation. Lady Farina, I believe a reminder of your current circumstances is in order. While the court is in session, the principles of justice and the law must come before all else. While you are an Archon, you are also first and foremost the defendant in this trial. You will prove yourself unable to defend against the prosecution's charges if you continue to withhold vital information against the rules of the court. I never thought you'd use that kind of rhetoric against me. That was no trick of rhetoric, Lady Farina. I've merely reiterated the rules of the court. Rules that all should respect and follow. <laughs> so, you not why Child was declared guilty, nor did you understand the structure and operations of the Oratrice. Instead of having been created by you, the manifestations of authority you mentioned have been made by the real Hydro Archon, haven't they? The real Hydro Archon? Well, now you're really losing me. It is true that I did not know why the Oratrice gave out a guilty verdict that day. But the Oratrice handed out that verdict unilaterally, and it has been operating independently ever since it was first created. You can't... you can't argue that just because a divine creation is flawed, that the god behind it must also be no god at all. <sighs> she's still throwing out all kinds of excuses. Seems like she's confident that we won't be able to produce proof that she has no power over the Oratrice. My power as an Archon. There are many ordinary citizens in the audience. How can I just carelessly demonstrate the formidable power of an Archon? If that poses a concern, I'm prepared to extend my protection to the audience. Um, you don't need to go that far. I... Aren't you the Hydro Archon? Or is it that you can't even wield the power of Hydro, much less the authority of a god? 
Indemnidium! Yes! It's all because of Indemnidium! All Archons derive their power from the faith of the people, and I've converted the people's faith in justice into Indemnidium! Thus did I give up all of my divine power to provide everyone with energy for their daily lives! Have you ever seen a more magnanimous god? <laughs> Isn't that a huge stretch? Yeah, no matter how generous an Archon can be, how could they give up all their power? Can a god with no power even still be called a god? It seems like nobody's buying Farina's excuse. Hey, come now, everyone. Please don't stare at me as if I was a liar. I'm still the same Farina you knew, right? The one that you loved. <laughs> Shouldn't you want to believe in me? Please? You've got to believe me! If what the prosecutor said is true, she really has committed a grave offense. Did she deceive all of us? And all of our parents and grandparents too? And then all of our ancestors? Ever since they were born? Enough! That's enough! Tell me then! If I'm not the real Hydro Archon, then who is? If you have no evidence of another Hydro Archon's existence, nor can you find anyone who can back up their claim to be such, then what grounds have you to say that I'm not actually the real deal? Wow, she came up with yet another argument. Uh, how can we refute her now? Seems like she really doesn't want to give up. Sound right. Paimon doesn't. that you can use right here and now to eliminate all suspicions of you being the latter. Miss Navi, please apply to serve as a temporary attorney for the prosecution before addressing the court. Though you act in partnership with the prosecutor, you must still adhere to proper procedure. <sighs> uh, super sorry, Monsieur Chief Justice. I swear this really will be the last time that I'll speak out of turn. Now, I I've brought some seawater from Poisson. As everyone knows, a massive flood struck the area not long ago, taking many lives, including those of some of my closest friends. So, Miss Farina, would you dare to touch some of the seawater? If we are to believe that you are indeed the real Hydro Archon, touching the seawater would have no effect on you. All it should do is strengthen your case. But, if you don't dare to touch it, then we would have basically proved the reverse. Oh, and I must remind you that after the disaster at Poisson, nobody wants to see any more people dissolve. I do hope you'll act prudently and choose the simpler path of admitting guilt. Navia from the Spina di Rasula. The Spina has governed Poisson for many years. I guess her suggestion is valid. If Lady Farina is indeed just a human, she's probably Fontanian like all the rest of us. Would she really dare to try? Lady Farina, this test has been unilaterally proposed by the prosecution. As it falls outside the realm of standard court proceedings, you possess the right to decline participation. <sighs> well, of course he had to tell her that. But refusing to participate is basically the same as a confession of guilt. She's just staring at the water without saying a single word. It really does seem like she's quite terrified of it. 
That could only mean... What's going on? Is she really planning to... Uh, that's not what we thought she would... <sighs> Due to the inherent risk of the test, Lady Farina, you may... <clears throat> Present, Miss Siegewing. Please come forward and attend to the defendant. Siegewing? Don't be nervous. It'll just take a few seconds. Hmm. Let me see. Mm -hmm. That should be enough. Please announce the results of your evaluation to the court, Miss Siegewing. As everyone doubtlessly saw, Miss Farina was displaying symptoms of hyperventilation and flushed skin. These indicate that she was experiencing the adverse effects of exposure to primordial seawater. The extent to which she was affected is the same as other humans when exposed to primordial seawater of a similar concentration. Thank you, Miss Siegewing. Lady Farina, you may return to the defendant's stand. Oh, wait. What did she just say? I didn't get dissolved! Shouldn't that be enough to prove my innocence? Well, considering your tendency to run from your problems, we did originally prepare a direct sample of the seawater around Poisson. However, after extensive discussion, we exchanged it for a sample that is not concentrated enough to dissolve an actual human. After all, on the off chance that something entirely unexpected might occur, we don't want anyone else to lose their life to the sea. 